Okay, so there's going to be two proofs. Uh, one proof for the neural network Gaussian process kernel and one proof for the neural tangent kernel. So this is the proof for the uh, proof of the uh, neural network Gaussian process kernel. The uh, Let's just call it the NNGP. And the proof is by induction. So what you do is you prove that um, as you go through the layers of the neural network, this property of having this Gaussian structure is preserved from layer to layer. And the kernel updates in the way you saw uh, the formula for sigma L. So that's the, the way the proof is going to go. So normally people write this, they say proof by uh, induction. I put the proof by induction the part of it that's important into a, uh, uh, a proposition. And this kind of abstracts away all of the properties about neural networks and parameters and stuff. You don't need any of that for this thing. It's a really statement about random functions. So that's what I'm going to get to. It's called a uh, proposition 24 uh, here. Um, and I'm going to make a definition to make things easier. So this is a definition we've seen before. What is a Gaussian process? So a uh, Gaussian process. So the Gaussian process is a random function uh, f of x, and it has the following property that uh, any finite sample of points x together makes a Gaussian vector. So a Gaussian process is just yeah, kind of a generalization to of a Gaussian vector to infinitely many points. So I'm going to write it like this. So uh, we're going to write tilde and then gp for Gaussian process. And then we're going to have two functions, m of x and sigma of x, x prime. So we're going to see f of x being a Gaussian process with mean m of x and uh, covariance structure sigma. This is the covariance. It means precisely the following for any finite set. So this is the same as for any finite set of test points x1 up to xn test. So if you have some set of test points, uh, then the joint distribution of the vector, the vector f of x1 all the way up to f of x and test, this is a Gaussian vector. So this is a Gaussian vector. And its mean is this vector mx1 all the way up to m x and test. And then its covariance structure is given by this sigma matrix. Uh, let's see, I could write out the whole matrix, but let's write it like this, uh, sigma of xi, xj, uh, ij going from one to n test. So it's the uh, the matrix you get by doing all the possible pairs of, of, uh, of points. Okay, so a Gaussian process is just something where the, any finite dimensional subset of it is a Gaussian vector. Okay, and uh, the main result is that in a neural network, as you go from one layer to the next layer, if one layer is a Gaussian process, then the next layer is also a Gaussian process. And by propagating that through the network, um, you get the result we want about neural network Gaussian processes. And of course, uh, the formula will only work in the limit that the widths go to infinity. And we'll see why that happens in a sec. So here's the exact proposition, proposition 24. And I call this a uh, propagation, propagation of NNGP kernel. Uh, so here's the situation. You have an old function and a new function, and the old function is assumed to be a, a Gaussian process, and the new function is going to be derived from the old function through kind of like a layer-wise update, and then the result is going to be that the new function is a Gaussian process. So the if part is if f old from r n in to r n old is a GP with mean zero and covariance matrix sigma old. Then if you define the function F new from R and in to R and new, and it's defined as follows, F new of X is equal to sigma W divided by the square root of N old times some weight matrix W times some Nonlinearity phi applied to f old of x plus bias vector b. Okay, so let me learn the, the dimensions here. So this is a, a 
n old by one vector. This is a weight matrix of size n new by n old. This is a bias vector size n new by one. So this is exactly how you get from one layer of a neural network to the next layer. You apply this function. So uh, the way this proposition is written, we have old and new, and we're propagating the kernel from old to new. Uh, and in a neural network, you have layers, and you think of each layer sequentially as being the old function and then the new function, and so on. Okay, so f new is defined like this. The result is that f new, f new, let me write it like this, in the limit, uh, Let's write it like this. Uh, F new is also a Gaussian process. So this is true no matter what, but in the limit that the uh, n old goes to infinity, we can write down its curl nicely. So and in the limit n old is going to infinity, we can write its kernel. So it's a Gaussian process. Uh, F new is going to be a Gaussian process of mean zero and sigma nu. And sigma nu has this formula sigma nu Okay, uh, that's the statement. Uh, so this this expectation is exactly what we saw before uh, with the zz prime definition. It's the same thing. So phi of f uh, phi of z phi of z prime plus sigma b squared, where uh, zz prime are Gaussian with mean zero. And covariance matrix sigma old okay let me let me write it i'll show it like this sigma of xx prime xx prime it's that two by two matrix okay this is actually getting a little messy let me rewrite this one so the distribution of zz prime are supposed to be uh, gaussian and we have the covariance structure given by sigma old. Let me rewrite that. So zz prime, or Gaussian, with mean zero, and covariance matrix sigma old xx, sigma old x prime x prime, and covariance is xx prime. So the covariance structure of these two things um, are the old sigma, and that is how the new sigma is defined. Okay, uh, so let me be perfectly clear what's going on here. Uh, one more detail that I left out. Let me put that detail back in. Uh, so a Gaussian process, I'm thinking of functions. These are functions in R, right? Because uh, otherwise you can't, you know, you can't have a, you need to get, have a little slightly more complicated definition. So, uh, and then over here, I did it with functions that are vectors of size n new and n old. So let me make it more specific. Uh, so what I want this function f old, instead of saying it is a Gaussian process, I want to say every component f i old. So it has n old components, f1, f2, f3. Each of them is a Gaussian process. Each component is a Gaussian process. And f i old, f j old are independent. So that's the assumption. Um, it's a vector. Every component individually is a Gaussian process, and any two components are independent. So that's what I want to do um, for the assumption, and the output will be the same. So uh, the way I wrote it, I said f nu is a Gaussian process. What I meant to say is that f nu i is a Gaussian process for every i. So every component individually is a Gaussian process given by this new kernel, which is propagated from the old kernel, and fi, fj. Uh, 
are independent for i not equal to j. Okay, and all of this holds, all these all these facts hold in the limit that the n old goes to infinity. So uh, you make the size of n old bigger and bigger and bigger. All of these statements make sense no matter what n old is. And as long as these things are true in the limit, uh, you get this new function uh, will also uh, be a Gaussian process in this in this way. Okay, uh, so that's the statement. Um, so it takes a second to digest the statement. Uh, that's why it's helpful to have this definition of Gaussian process. It basically, the you know the short version. Let's write the short version. <laughs> short version. Short, short version. F old is a GP. Implies F new is a GP. That's really what it is. And going from old to new is exactly what we do in the neural network. So uh, that's why I call it the propagation of the NNGP kernel. Okay, so here comes the proof. And the proof, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because the proof is exactly what we did already for the uh, uh, feature regression model. So the point is that uh, F new is exactly a random feature regression model. model and what are the the features with features given by f old so what are the features uh they are this phi of x is equal to the nonlinearity phi applied to f old of x okay and maybe more specifically for each i for each each component i uh each of those is the i the i component of this guy. So uh, the ith component of that. And so the way we're doing the the weights and the uh, biases is exactly the, those are the parameters in the uh, random feature model. And the features are the old function passed through this function phi. And so that explains, uh, if you look at the Gaussian process proof from the feature regression model, the thing that should be relevant, therefore, if I knew is Gaussian. So it's a Gaussian process. And the kernel, the kernel is given precisely there. So the kernel is 1 over n old times the sum from i equals 1 to n old of phi of f old of x i phi of f old of x prime i. So this is what we called, before we were calling it k, k of x x prime. So by our work with, uh, now you see why we did so much work on uh, random feature regression, uh, because by our work from feature regression, we know that this new thing is it precisely a Gaussian process, and this is its kernel. This is the kernel we studied. We already had this. This was a proposition uh, from before, and we calculated things explicitly. It just came from matrix multiplication of Gaussians and stuff like that. But by that result, uh, fi nu is a Gaussian process, and this is its kernel. And now here's the important thing, that in the limit that n old goes to infinity, we're doing an average of things. By the assumptions, these things are independent. That was the assumption for different values of i. Um, so that was an important assumption. And so in the limit that n old goes to infinity, this thing converges to precisely the expected value of this. Uh, OK, and I left some terms out. So the terms I left out are sigma w squared plus sigma b squared. So those those terms were from the extension of the kernel. So that's, that's another video uh, that we did. OK, so what you get in the limit is this expected value, phi of f old of x 1 phi of f old of x 1 plus sigma b squared. So in the limit, um, this sum over independent things converges to the average. And that's why we needed that assumption. OK, so that's the proof. OK, there's one other detail of the proof, which is you need to check independence. Um, so we need to, this shows you that fi is a Gaussian process with the correct kernel. And you need some other argument to show that fi new, that's part one, if I knew and FJ knew are independent. Yeah, and the, the argument here is that uh, if I knew is a function only of the ith row. This is depends only on the ith row of weights WI. So it's the ith row of the matrix W. This depends only on the jth row, jth row. weights wj and because the way the weights are chosen they're all independent therefore fi and fj will be independent so that is how the gaussian 
neural network gaussian process kernel propagates and it really is just using what we learned about the feature regression model so that's why it was important to learn the feature regression model very well okay uh, hopefully that sketch works for you you should check the details in the notes if uh that was confusing because i definitely didn't go into a lot of detail here